On today's training report, we're going to go through the capitalization and the sector lens of perspective as to what's been going on in the market with all the volatility. And then we're going to take a, a macro look at the unemployment rate, the Fed funds rate, inflation, and how that's affected the S&P 500 over the long term and what it might mean to us right now. Welcome to The Trending Report, brought to you by USA Financial. The Trending Report is a bi-weekly show that aims to focus on the trend lines rather than the headlines. Each episode features commentary around the state of the market, as well as other factors that may impact your personal finances. The host of The Trending Report is an investment advisor representative of and securities are offered through USA Financial Securities, member FINRA SIPC, a registered investment advisor. The Trending Report is educational and not intended as personal financial advice. And welcome to The Trending Report. Today we're going to be reviewing data ending 9-23. So last Friday, 9-23, as you can see here, and it was a whirlwind of a week for the stock market. Uh, obviously, the Federal Reserve increased interest rates once again up to three and a quarter. Uh, that uh, put a lot of pressure on the stock market, as did everything happening globally. So we're going to take a look at things from a capitalization standpoint. We're going to take a look at things from a sector standpoint. And then I'm going to share with you a, a macro level view of interest rates, unemployment, the stock market performance, and other really important and interesting correlated data, which I think will provide a little perspective for what we're all going through right now. So with that being said, let's move forward to, uh, to our capitalization data. And here we are, just as we've done in the past, we've got uh, macro information, meso information, and micro information. Basically, what this means is we're looking at different calculation periods of time. Micro, we're taking daily periods. Meso, we're taking three-day periods. And macro, we're taking weekly periods. And then we're ranking things so that you can get a feel for the direction and kind of how things are moving uh, with the market as it relates to other important factors. Uh, you'll also notice on here that there are some gray bars. Uh, uh, right here, we see a blue bar here. We've got two more gray bars down at the bottom on the left-hand side. Uh, that's just so that you've got a little bit something to correlate against. So what we're looking at there is cash. So how does cash compare to the rest of the market? In the blue bar, it's the total U.S. stock market. So how do subsets of the market compare against the overall market? And then down towards the bottom of the screen here, you'll see uh, aggregate bonds, and you'll also see international stock as a comparison. So let's just stick on the macro right now and take a look at that. And what you'll see is the uh, the, the three-month T-bill, uh, essentially what we call cash, is here in the number one spot on macro, and we can bring it right across on meso and micro. So that's not a good indicator for the rest of the stock market when cash is essentially winning the day over all of the various subsets of the stock market. Now, the overall market here is in blue. And it's staying uh, relatively in the center of our scoring uh, from number one to 15, as you can see here. Uh, but look what's happened with the bond funds. So here's aggregate bonds down here in the lower left. Then it comes up into the middle on the mezzo, and then it jumps up to the number two spot on the micro. Again, that provides or, or illustrates the emphasis of the fact that the market was under a lot of duress in the micro here uh, as it has performed very poorly in the previous week. And then internationals, Gave a little bit of a climb here, uh, still not uh, not climbing towards the top, but you can see it started to beat some of the subsets. The other things that you'll notice here is over here on the far left, and where I'm highlighting in red, you can see that the uh, the mid caps, the S and P mid cap 400, was winning the day on the macro. Uh, but as we work our way across through the mezzo here in the middle, as well as the micro on the red, what you're seeing is large caps are starting to flow back up towards the higher level of the scoring as it relates to the market. But keep in mind, we still have cash or that one to three month short term T-bill ranking it at the highest slot. Now, let's take a quick moment and move over to uh, the sector viewpoint because uh, you get a different view yet when we move to that level. So once again, we've got macro on the left, meso in the middle, and micro on the far right. And once again, we're seeing cash or the one to three month short term T-bill winning the day, coming in in the number one spot all the way across micro, meso, and macro. Uh, that is a pretty unique uh, viewpoint that we're seeing today. And then once again, we see international stock, the blue bar, 
uh, coming in pretty much right across the middle again as well. So we're seeing shifting, flipping, if you will. Uh, so in Lake Michigan, uh, I'm, I'm here in Michigan and oftentimes in the Great Lakes, Lake Michigan is a fairly deep lake, a little over 300 feet in its deepest spots. And what happens is sometimes the water literally just flips over. So it'll be nice and warm. It might be, you know, in the mid 70s, which is warm for Lake Michigan. Uh, and it might be in the mid 70s uh, one day and people are swimming in it. And then the next day, uh, for whatever reason the entire lake turns over the cold water comes to the top the warm water goes to the bottom and you don't even notice the difference it doesn't even have to be a storm and all of a sudden uh, the, the water is very different, but it's just literally flipped. That's kind of what we see happen happen here. Uh, we, we saw a few weeks ago where the the cash was moving its way down and the market just kind of flipped back over and now we've got cash on the top and we're also seeing that with some of the other things in here as well. So here's energy. Uh, in the number six spot on the macro. And then we see uh, energy uh, jumps up to the number three spot in the mezzo, but then look over here on the far right under the micro, it's in the number 15 spot. So um, again, the short term has been very tough on certain subsets, uh, energy being the classic example from a sector perspective. Total international stock was ranking very low on the macro. It worked its way up a little bit on the mezzo and a little bit further on the micro. Uh, but again, the overall U.S. stock market is still coming in above the international market. But you can see on the micro here, it closed the gap in that number eight and number nine spot. So again, it's been uh, it's been rough rowing uh, for the stock market here as of late. Inflation numbers uh, continue to be an issue. Uh, the uh, the invasion of uh, Ukraine continues to be an issue. All the energy uh, kind of domino effect that takes place because of that continues to be an issue. Interest rates uh, continue to go up from the Fed, and obviously inflation continues to be an issue. So let's take a look at. A really high level view of some of these things and how they might compare from now versus the past. So what we're going to look at is United States unemployment rate compared against the Fed funds rate compared against inflation rate compared against the S&P 500. And all of these charts are going back to 1980. So for the most part, they line up for you. So uh, again, here is the pandemic where we get unemployment in the 15% uh, range, it just jumps right up. So here was the financial crisis. You could see the, the way that looked and look at the comparison and how that uh, has, has uh, got a, such different angles to it in the pandemic. It shot up literally overnight, but then it dropped uh, almost equally fast versus a, a shoot up or a ramp up during the financial crisis and then a slow burn on the way down uh, right on, uh, continuing right down its slide up until we had uh, had the pandemic take place. And then because of the inflation rate, uh, as all of this employment comes rocketing back down, inflation started to rocket up, which then means down here in the lower left, they, the Fed fund starts to increase interest rates, trying to keep inflation at bay. And, uh, and in doing so, keep in mind, you know, we're, we're still... Uh, we're, we're in a spot with, with inflation where we're in the eight to nine percent range right now. Uh, but back here in 1980, we were hitting 15 percent. So that's what they're trying to avoid. So back in 1980, the Fed funds rate actually hit 20 percent as they were trying to take care of this inflation angle right here. Uh, the Fed funds hit it with that uh, that kind of emphasis. Now, we're hoping and expecting that not to be the case here, uh, but that's what's happening as we're seeing inflation ramp up over here on the right. They're reacting by bringing up the Fed funds rates to try to hold that down. Uh, now, the difference is uh, when they did that, they also, uh, as, as Fed funds were up here in the lower left, that started to make unemployment go up. And if you were listening to uh, what was said this past week, they talked about the fact that they expect unemployment to come back up uh, because of what's going on over here and the fact that the feds are raising rates here. Now, all of this has had an issue on the stock market or had a, a reaction, I should say, with the stock market. So here's the dot-com bubble. Here is the financial crisis. And here is what we're dealing with right now. So you, again, you can see a very significant drop 
uh, but a very unique drop. Things have been very different because we are in a historic environment. A lot of these things have never happened before and never happened the way that they've occurred in such a short order with the pandemic. And so now we're trying to figure out how we, meaning the U.S. government and the Federal Reserve, are trying to figure out how to keep this under control. So odds are we're going to have a rocky road for a bit until they're able to use this Fed funds rate in order to get a cap on inflation rate because they would rather bring that inflation rate down as again as it's been stated even if it puts us into a recession because they believe letting the inflation rate run too high creates a longer term more significant issue than a potential ref uh, recession because of these adjustments so uh, lots to be tracking we'll continue to stay on top of it uh, i hope you've uh, you've enjoyed and gathered kind of a perspective of what's going on in the market here and we'll continue to provide that for you with the trending report as we like to say uh, the trend lines beat the headlines when you understand how it all fits together thanks again for listening to this episode of the trending report powered by usa financial we invite you to visit usafinancial.com to find out more about our work with independent advisors and their clients all around the country. Any projections, targets, or estimates in this report are forward-looking statements and are based on the firm's research, analysis, and assumptions. Due to the rapidly changing market conditions and the complexity of investment decisions, supplemental information and other sources may be required to make informed investment decisions. All expressions of opinions are subject to change without notice. Clients should seek financial advice regarding the appropriateness of investing in any security or investment strategy discussed.